Hello again, wrestling fans. I'm Scott Casper. This is Tony Hager. It's time for GWN. Well, Taylor Lamont and G. Angelo Hancock both won bronze. A, a good start for Team USA Greco, competing at the Junior World Championships and make home France. Lamont dropped his semifinal bout 2-1 against 2013 Cadet World Champ Yetne Kissinger of Germany, but was able to rebound in the bronze medal round, scoring a late takedown and a 5-3 victory. What do you think of Taylor's performance, Tony? I mean, it was great to see him medal after coming home three straight years empty-handed. Yeah, and in the semifinals there, the only points that were scored were off passivity. We, we've talked about, you know, the argument of getting ready of the, you know, get, getting rid of the force parterre um, and, and the passivity point, looking at that a little bit closer. It, just take it out of the official's hands. But at the end of the day, he came back and, and came home with a bronze. To come back from that with all, you know, he's been there three times now. No medals, so this is a big uh, monkey off his back now. Well, let's take a look at what Taylor had to say. It's the fourth time here, and I went home empty-handed three times, and I wasn't going to let it, especially when I was this close again. So I just went out there and took what was mine. Yeah, fifth last year, um, and you, you, you were kind of emotional after, you know, when the clock struck six minutes. Um, was that weighing on you last year's bronze medal match? Yeah, that's all I thought about the whole time, is just that bronze medal match. I couldn't get a takedown. I, don't, I hate losing off of referee decisions, and that wasn't semis. I wasn't going to let it happen again, and I just... I mean, that, that guy was getting tired. I could feel it. I just got the takedown when it counted. Well, trailing Georgia's junior European servo medalist, Georgie Malia, 8-7 at the start of the second period, Hancock was hit with a four-point headlock and was unable to make up the difference. He lost 12-8, but he came storming back strong in the bronze medal match to defeat his Japanese opponent, Yada Nara, 3-0. Here's Hancock after his bronze medal bout. It's a great feeling, you know. I said last year I'm going to put in the hard work. And I did. I feel like I deserve this. I was training with the senior team year round, trying to get as best as I could. And, uh, you know, this is not my full potential. I had a close match in the semis, and it hurts when you know you're the best, but sometimes you let it go through your fingers. But if I have one more year, it's going to happen. I think the future looks bright for our Greco squad. What are your thoughts on Greco going forward? Well, I mean, Hancock is is definitely a, a gem for Team USA. He got third at the Olympic team trials, got third at the U.S. Open. Uh, There's not really a, a wild name that a lot of people know yet, but I think as he continues to grow in Greco, if he continues to train in that style, he's going to be a star, and he'll be a force to reckon with in 2020 at Tokyo, hopefully. Well, we talked with U.S. Greco-Roman coach Matt Lindland and his final thoughts on the U.S. performance in France. All right, coach, uh, good end of the day, you know, two medals. You know, talk about talk about those two guys first. Talk about performed. those two guys, man, tons of heart, you know, doing, doing the right stuff, uh, you know, putting the work in, putting the time in. Uh, you know, in the right training environments, uh, getting to camps, getting overseas, uh, getting international tournaments, getting the experience, and uh, just uh, staying disciplined, sticking with our plans. Um, you know, I mean, that's what that's what it takes. We got we got some really you know focused, dedicated young men on this this team, and uh, they're exciting, and uh, they're going out there to win, and they, they showed a ton of heart. I'm expecting some of these guys to you know for sure be on our 2020 team, and uh, this is where it starts right now. They got four years. And that time's gonna come quick, and so they gotta stay the course. They gotta stay humble. They gotta they still gotta stay grateful for for all the opportunities that they have, and and you know all the blessings that you know have been bestowed upon them because they've got a ton of great opportunities right now, and uh, we're moving in the right direction. And uh, I'm just happy to to lead this and, and be a part of it. Big shout out to our buddy USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel. Team USA failed to medal on day two, but you can find complete results from Greek Rome and all the action over there on themat.com. Our Greco talk will continue after this short timeout. You're watching GWN powered by Defense Soap. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. 
Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Well, of the more than 100 Greco-Roman bouts in Brazil, there were a total of six featuring American athletes. Uh, you heard me right. I said six. What many expected to be a turning point for Team USA ultimately ended in frustration as the program failed to reach the medal podium for a second straight cycle. So what's the problem and how do we fix it? We asked the founder of Five Point Move, a media outlet devoted entirely to American Greco. Well, first and foremost... You know, it wasn't just a bad day. The guys couldn't defend in parterre. You know, there's really no way to hide from that. Everybody got turned. Everybody lost because they got turned. That is something that had been a concentration uh, during training. Uh, going back to, you know, the close of the trials. After the trials, uh, Robbie and uh, Andy went to uh, Hungary and Austria, respectively. You know, Jesse was doing the qualifying. Then they all got together in Concord. They had training camp. Then they went to Azerbaijan. They had a three-week training camp. Then they came back to the States. They had the pre-Olympic camp in Colorado Springs. And aside from the pretty state-of-the-art conditioning program that they were uh, enrolled in, you know, part their defense, that was a focus. And it didn't turn out. Part of the problem is I think that U.S. fans who don't pay attention to Greco on a regular basis probably do see it as, uh, well, they went two and four, and that's that's how that went. But, you know, you also have to look at the rule set. Being an American wrestling overseas is not the easiest task in the world. Uh, they get put down practically zero uh, logical reason. Um, passivity is at its root not supposed to be subjective yet yeah, it, it really is and the american style perhaps plays into that a little bit jesse against uh the azerbaijan me uh Baramov. jesse got put down first of course as predictable as the sunrise jesse gets gutted out and he got put down against Darkevich. second period i don't know how or why he got put down he gave up a turn that's how he lost Ben got turned in the second period, even though that was a pretty low lock. Robbie was ahead two to nothing. He gets put down. They made sure they put Robbie down. You know, they knocked him twice uh, in a pretty short amount of time. And then Robbie got cut it out. So on one hand, you have the performance being, okay, well, they concentrated on parterre, yet they all lost because they got turned. They also were put in disadvantageous positions primarily because of the fact they're American. Um, I, I hate to say it like that because it sounds like excuse making and it's not an excuse because you have if you defend you're okay. There's talk there's talk that uh, forced parterre could potentially be eliminated um, once they reconvene in Switzerland and talk about all this. I don't know for sure if that's even true. That's been you know following every quad they adjust the rules and stuff like that. So yeah, forced parterre being taken out has been talked about. Um, the number one problem is that Greco-Roman wrestling in the United States is, you know, widely participated in at the youth level. You have talented, talented kids, killer athletes who, you know, go to college 
And even if they want to go back into Greco, it's really tough for them because a 22-year-old who might have been a cadet national champion, um, you know, he he's uh, coming out of college. Do, you know, do you think he, he's going to want to necessarily hop back into Greco when he knows that, like, there's two guys in his weight class who have been overseas and who have, you know, uh, been competing the whole time while he was out throwing legs and getting riding points? You know, probably not. Uh, you know that college grind is uh, it's it's tough to kind of rankle with. So yeah, college grassroots. Um, we need more coaches at all age levels for sure. Um, but other than that, there's a pretty big uptick with Greco overall uh, as of recent. There's a different kind of attitude. There's a different perspective. It's not all gloom and doom either. And I, I think that is uh, worth noting. All right. So what do you think, Tony? Is it a leadership issue? Is it a money issue? Is it a parterre issue? What is it? Well, I, I didn't really think funding was an issue because I figured that Greco gets the same as freestyle. But it sounds like from Tim that it is not. It's not the same. It's not fair. So I'd be kind of curious to see where USA Wrestling is really spending their money and why they're not putting more money into Greco if that is the case. So, I mean, money is the, the driving factor to a lot of metals. If you look at um, all the other countries, how much money they're spending on their athletes, they, they're getting it done. They're, they're bringing home the medals. So if we want to do that, we have to work more money into training facilities, bringing more kids into the Colorado Springs OTC system, and, and make it happen. All right, Greco out, freestyle in. U.S. coach Brandon Slay joins us after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News presented by McBride Mats. Homemade crust, fresh meats and vegetables, 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all-new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Well, the Junior World Championships will conclude this weekend with men's and women's freestyle. And after finishing fourth last year, Team USA looks to have their strongest team in recent years and are expected to be one of the best in France. With a preview of this year's squad, we're joined by U.S. National Coach Brandon Slay. Let's break it down, Coach. 50 kilos. Spencer Lee looks to be the favorite here. I mean, he won all of his bouts last year by tech fall. How good has he gotten since he won gold? I think he's improved a lot. It was great to have him as Daniel Dennis's training partner. So he's the training partner for our Olympian at 57 kilo. Spent three weeks in, three weeks with him over in Rio, and just just watched him continue to develop. So been with him today. His weight cut, his weights. Uh, you know he's doing great. He's still smiling. Still has a great attitude. So I'm I'm excited to see him get us started on Saturday. He's 
He's our lowest weight class and one of the first guys to compete on Saturday. Coach, what can you talk to us? Uh, what can you say about Dayton Fix? Dayton's going to come into this tournament, I think, with just a, a little kind of grit in his teeth. Last year, I think he believed he was going to be the cadet world champion. Um, lost a tough match to the Russian. Ended up coming back and, and winning in a dominating fashion to get the cadet world bronze. So, uh, you know, he's, he's made the junior world team this year. He's up a weight class. And, you know, he's – I watched him at camp last week at the Olympic Training Center and wrestling with, with some of our, you know, top senior-level guys that I brought out there. And he was, he was right in the mix. So, um, I'm, I'm excited and looking forward to seeing how Dayton competes in his first year at juniors. Coach, let's move to 74 kilos there. Is uh, Mark Hall going to be wrestling for Team USA, a 2014 World Cadet champ? What can you tell us about Mark and how he's improved? I've had Mark with me at the Olympic Training Center the last five years. And you know, last year, I really believe he was one of the top wrestlers in the world in his first year as juniors. The thing with all these guys is, is that don't just get so focused in, and – talking about the gold, the gold, the gold, the medal, the medal, the medal. What I really want these guys to do is to focus on just giving their full effort. Just give their full effort for full six minutes and, you know, the, getting your hand raised and the medals, all that stuff's going to take care of itself. But if you don't give your full effort, you don't wrestle the whole entire six minutes, then, you know, you can walk away from this tournament with a lot of regrets. We're talking with Brandon Slay. Brandon, we're breaking it down. 84 kilos is where we head next. The revenge storyline seems to be, uh, uh, you know, I think very important to me anyway, because it was a heat Valencia. Okay. Who's desperately trying to do what you want him to do. And that's wrestle a full six. Well, he lost seven, four to Mazaliev. And I've got to believe that this is playing a little heavy on his shoulders. What are your thoughts? I think, that, you know, same situation for Zahid. You know, Zahid lost a close match to the Russian last year and the Russian, he got the Russian so tired and so exhausted. The Russian couldn't even compete in his next match against Iran. And so I think Zahid, he wrestled, you know, after his match in New York and the beat the streets, he clearly didn't, did not have a good showing against the reigning world champion, but he came back, made the world team and beat a very, very uh, tough Bo Nickel to, to make the junior world team. And I think Zahid's like, Hey, this is round two. And, and he wants to, he wants to leave France with, you know, with some joy and a smile on his face. And so he's, he's focused, he's healthy and he's ready to go. What do we expect from uh, the balance of the weekend, Coach? What are you, what's your takeaway as you see it? Well, I've coached this will be my this will be my third year coaching at, at the Junior World Championships, and you know, two years ago we were second in the world, and we had six medals out of the eight weight classes. You know, last year we had a, a world champion in Spencer Lee, um, you know, and and we had two other world medalists in, in Mitchich and. Stevon Mitchich and Nathan Butler, but we didn't do as well as a team, you know, but this year, I think with, with the experience we have with, with Spencer Lee and Mark Hall and Zahid Valencia and Jordan Wood, these guys have been to, to world championships before. I think this experience will pay off and, and ultimately, you know, to be, to be one of the best teams in the world, you have to win multiple medals. That's just how it is. I mean, that's something we're going to have to do, but again, I'm not going to talk about the medals, the medals, the medals. I'm going to get these guys micro focused on, you know, their effort, their effort, their effort. If they if they have that focus, then again, the, the team titles and the individual titles, all that will take care of itself. I mean, Spencer Lee is the star of this team at 50 kilos. Tony, or am I missing something? <laughs> yeah, there. This is the guy that everyone's going to be watching. Returning junior champ. He he won the the world championships as a cadet and he's really won everything on the international level and for him to come back he's going to be a big favorite everybody is is back at his weight class um so every, he'll be looking to go to that quick takedown and his his quick leg laces that is what really made him a star last year is going to that takedown and multiple 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 leg laces hey stay tuned don't go anywhere you're watching global wrestling news
Yellow Blue wants to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award-winning too. Wings and Things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram 133 or on my website, teamramos.co. All right, welcome back. It's time for our quick hits. If you thought Oklahoma was going to spend an entire year in limbo, think again. Just weeks after the sudden resignation of Mark Cody, the OU Athletic Department has hired one of the most prominent coaches in the country, longtime Ohio State assistant Lou Roselli. Roselli has spent the past decade in Columbus. He's been on every single short list for every coaching job that's ever opened up, as far as I know. And he's helped guide the Bucks to runner-up finishes in 2008 and 9 and an NCAA championship title in 2015. Roselli has also made a major impact internationally, serving as an assistant on the U.S. national squad and as the personal coach of Olympic and world gold medalist Kyle Snyder. I think it's a huge save for OU. Yeah, huge save. This is a huge hire by Oklahoma, especially after Kyle Snyder comes back with winning a gold. I mean, Tom Ryan, I've seen him on social media. He's kind of, kind of happy and chippy about it, and I just, down deep down, he's got to be upset because this was a big key guide for their program. He he really held it together for the international wrestlers and inside that college wrestling. Well, now, I'm, I want to argue one point. Remember, they just hired Tavel Delagno, so it's not like they weren't bringing younger guys up in the coaching staff as well. they got Jay Jaggers, Travel Delagnev, they've got uh, a lot of little Logie Bear Stever. I mean, this thing is growing. It's continuing to gather steam. Yeah, I mean, this is a timing is perfect for, for Rulu Roselli, for Oklahoma to make this happen. And uh, I, I can't believe that they got it done this quick. Something tells me behind the scenes that this was set up. I mean, because Mark Cody, what was it, like last week we were talking about him being out of Oklahoma and now Lou Roselli's there, so... Um, it's it's insane. I mean, he was in he was in Brazil. So how is he interviewing for the job when he's in That's Brazil? That's why they make Skype. I, 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 we we yeah. do interviews on Skype all the time. Why do I need to see you in person to interview you? I don't. Well, the timing actually ended up perfect. If they'd waited until April, there would have been a lot of other teams looking at Lou. I don't disagree. I've been really critical of the OU Athletic Department of how they handled Coach Cody, but this is an outstanding hire. I hope they give him everything they say they're going to give him and all the support he's going to need. Yeah, this is going to bring a ton of competition down to Oklahoma. John Smith, I mean, this is uh, this is going to be a heated rivalry, I think. If he can bring in the kids, if he can steal some kids from maybe from Oklahoma State, this is uh, this is going to be a, a great little uh, rivalry. Didn't really see that at Bedlam. Hopefully it returns. All right, 600-pound gorilla in the room. We're going to talk about it. What will this do? To Kyle Snyder. What will it do as far as Kyle Snyder using Lou Roselli as a personal coach? You know, I, I when it comes to, to Kyle Snyder, I think he's going to be fine with any coach that he does have. Uh, he'll be, I think coaches have not only they teach you technique, but they have, you know, a mental uh, side of coaching. So that will be missing in his, uh, his game. Maybe he'll travel with them. It just kind of depends on how he handles it. Um, here in the next couple of years at Ohio State. So maybe after he's done with Ohio State, he can maybe move down to Oklahoma. Maybe that's a plan to bring him in as a coach. Uh, who knows what they'll be working on. Well, as anticipated by us, we thought the Lou Roselli thing would go down. So on the show this weekend, the Takedown Show, we talked to Kyle Snyder and asked him that question. I'm sure things would change. I'm sure things would change, but 
I mean, Coach Coach Roselli, if he wants to be a head coach, then he deserves to be a head coach right. because that's I mean, he's just that caliber of a coach. And um, I mean, I think we would definitely lose something here at Ohio State without Coach Roselli, but I'd be I'd be really happy for him and his future. That's what he wants to do. And uh, sometimes, sometimes change can be a positive thing. Okay. So we talked about how this is going to affect the Ohio RTC, but what does it do for University of Oklahoma? Oh, this is a huge selling point for recruits coming in. Uh, be able to, to coach somebody to a gold medal, this is something that they will use a lot uh, when, when they're on their trips. I mean, they didn't, Oklahoma State and all these other schools, that there's there's nobody else that brought home a gold medal. Missouri brought home a bronze medal, but they're the only, he's the only one that brought home a gold so they're going to use this all the time for uh, the next four years, probably. All right. You know what? Great to have Helen Marulis and Kyle Snyder on the show this last weekend. This coming weekend, we want to remind you to tune in. Who's going to be on? Olympic bronze medalist, Jaden Cox from the University of Missouri. This fine young man will have some gems to share, I'm sure. For all of us at GWN, thanks for watching this very special edition. On behalf of Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and Hollywood Wayne Boyd, I'm Scott Casper. Talk to you next week.